Hi, my name is Meredith. Today we're going to experience a vinyasa practice focusing on gratitude. Yoga is not just physical movement. It's a spiritual journey that brings together the mind and the body using breathing exercises, physical poses, and meditation designed to encourage relaxation and reduce stress. Our practice today is not a competition. No one is going to win. Uh, what's most important today is to connect our mind, our body, and our breath. Nothing we do today should hurt. Honor your body by listening to your body when it tells you that a pose is uncomfortable. If you know you have physical limitations, please avoid any poses that um, you know will hurt your body. Let's begin today in a comfortable seated position. If you're comfortable, close your eyes. And if you'd like to set an intention for your practice today, maybe you want to focus on something that you're grateful for. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's life itself. Take a moment to think about something that you're thankful. Start to notice your breathing. Notice the breath coming in and the breath going out. Not trying to change it in any way, just noticing. Where do you notice the breath? Is it your nose? Your throat? Your lungs? Feel the breath as it comes in. the breath as it comes out. Relax your face. And clench your jaw. Relax your shoulders. mind strays away from the breath, if you start to think about something else, just gently bring it back. Gently open your eyes. We're going to start out today with a movement, warming up our body from the top to the bottom. We're going to start out with some gentle neck circles with our spine long and our shoulders relaxed. We're going to start moving our head to the right. We're going to move our head to the right, forward, Forward, left, back, right, forward, left, back, right, forward, left, back, and return to center. And now to the other direction, left, forward, 
right, back, left, world, right, back, left, world, right, back, and left, world, right, back, and return to center. And now for our shoulders, we're going to do some gentle shoulder rolls. Remember, nothing you do today should hurt. We're starting out with our shoulders relaxed. Lift up, back, and down. Inhale up, back, and down. And now to reverse it, inhale up, forward and down. Make sure you're relaxing your shoulders between rolls. Don't keep them hunched. Inhale up, forward and down. Beautiful. Just to warm up our wrists a little bit. Let's place our hands into fists and let's make some gentle wrist circles. I'm going outside first. It doesn't matter which direction you go as long as you switch halfway through. We put a little bit of pressure on our wrists when we do some poses like downward facing dog, which we'll learn in a few minutes. It's nice to get them moving first. Beautiful. We're going to gently come to all fours on our hands and knees. If being on your knees is uncomfortable, I do have a few blankets that you can put under your knees. This is called tabletop pose. We want our shoulders, arms, and wrists all to be in line and our knees to be directly underneath our hips. We're a rectangle, not a parallelogram. On an inhale, we're going to move into some cat cows. On an inhale, we're going to lift our tailbone, let our belly drop, chest forward, face forward for cow. As we exhale, we're going to tuck our tailbone, bring our belly button toward our spine, and chin to chest for cat. Inhale, tuck the tail, uh, lift the tailbone, belly drops, chest forward, face forward. And cat, exhale, tuck the tailbone, belly button toward the spine, and chin to chest. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Not throwing your head back, just face forward. And exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. Beautiful. On an inhale, we're going to put our weight into our left hand and gently inhale and lift our right hand up to the ceiling. Stretching long, spine long, looking up at the hand. If this isn't possible for you, you can lift your elbow toward the ceiling. Maybe you don't have that torso rotation, and that's beautiful. Everybody's body is perfect like it is. We're breathing, keeping our spine long, reaching toward the ceiling, and lower. Beautiful. Pressing our right hand into the mat. On an inhale, we lift the left arm, reaching long, twisting, chest open, spine long, shoulder away from our ears, and we're breathing. Beautiful, and lower. We're gonna to move to warming up our legs. On an inhale, we're going to put our weight into our left knee, keeping our hands in the mat, and lift our right leg behind us. Maybe your leg comes parallel with your hip. Maybe you can only get it an inch off the mat, 
or maybe you need to put it on the mat behind you and that's fine. Engaging our gluteals, lifting our leg, leg long. And lower. And to the other side, putting our weight into our right knee, lifting our left leg up behind us. You might notice that when we do poses on both sides, you might notice that one side feels very different than the other side. And that's normal. And lower. Beautiful. We're going to go back to lifting the right leg and this time we're going to see, and it's okay if we can't, if we can lift also the left arm. So on an inhale, our right leg goes out behind us and maybe we can lift our left arm. Stretching long from the tips of our fingers to the tips of our toes. And we're breathing. Don't hold your breath. And lower. Beautiful. Inhale, lift the left leg and maybe the right arm. And lower. Beautiful. From all fours, we're going to move our knees a little bit wider than hip distance apart towards the edge of the mat. Bring our toes together and we're going to sink into our heels, putting our chest between our knees, forehead to the mat, arms out long. This is child's pose. Sometimes our yoga practice can become a little bit overwhelming for us, both physically and mentally. If at any point during the practice you feel like you need a break, Child's Pose is a great place to take a break. And rise back up onto all fours. On an inhale, we're going to tuck our toes, press into, and on an exhale, we're going to press into the mat and lift our hips for downward facing dog. We're pressing our heels towards the mat, but they do not need to touch. Pressing the chest toward the thighs. Sometimes it feels good to pedal out the legs. Press one heel deeper toward the mat, bending the other knee. And coming to stillness, let's check back into our gratitude, what we're thankful for. Take a minute to refocus on our gratitude. Beautiful. We're going to start to walk our hands to our feet or our feet to our hands for a forward fold. You can walk your hands to your feet or you can walk your feet to your hands for a forward fold. You may need a block or two for your forward fold and that's okay. There's no need to lock your knee. You can have a gentle bend in your knee and that's fine. On an inhale, we're going to put our hands on our shins and lift halfway to a flat back. And exhale, lower. On an inhale, we're going to bend the knees and gently rise up, arms overhead, palms facing. For mountain pose. I'm getting stuck in my lights. In mountain pose, it may seem like we're just standing here, but this is a, um, there's much more to it. We've got our feet grounded on the mat, our spine is long, crown of our head is lifted. We're engaging all four corners of our feet, both 
um, sides of the ball of the foot and both sides of the heel. And we're breathing. Beautiful. On an inhale, we're going to raise our arms up above overhead, palms facing, and we're going to bend the knee and sink the hips as if we were sitting into a chair for chair pose. Our spine is long. We're breathing. If it's too much to have your hands up in the air, you can put them on your hips or have them by your side. Inhale, rise up, and on an exhale, we're going to do a gentle bow. Straight up, lower the arms, take a breath, and inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit back down into your chair. If you're feeling comfortable in your chair pose, you can make the pose a little bit more intense by lifting onto your toes. And lower and rise up. Gentle back bend. Rise up and arms down. We're going to sit down into our chair one more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, lower into your chair. We're sitting back. We should be able to see our toes in front of our knees. Shoulders away from our ears. I know that's something I struggle with, is hunching my shoulders. Shoulders away from our ears, spine long. If you'd like to, tip forward onto your toes. Release, rise up. Gentle back bend. Rise up and lower. Beautiful. Inhale, arms up. And on an exhale, we're going to lead with the chest. Swan dive forward, forward fold. If your hands are not already there, we're going to bend the knees and put our hands on the mat and step back into plank, the top of a push-up. We're not staying here for a long time, but if you need to put your knees down, that's fine. Press into the hands and lift the hips for downward facing dog. And walk the hands to the feet or the feet to the hands for a forward fold. Hands to shins, rise up halfway. And exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, slowly rise up, hands overhead. And exhale, lower. On an inhale, we're going to keep our, put our weight into our left foot, lift our right, and step back, foot flat on the mat, um, toes at a 45 degree angle pointing to the front right corner of the mat and arms overhead for warrior one. Our spine is long, our shoulders are away from our ears, and we're breathing. Both legs are engaged, our core is engaged for balance. Inhale and then an exhale, open up the chest to the right, arms long. Gaze is over the right arm for warrior two. Again, we're breathing, arms are long. Core is engaged, shoulders away from our ears. Our body should be on one plane. Our arms, torso, head, legs, feet are all in a line. And on an inhale, we're going to cartwheel the arms to frame the front foot flat on the mat and step back into plank. We're not staying here long, but if you need to put your knees down, that's fine. 
Press the hips up for downward facing dog. Let's check back in with our gratitude. Think about what we're thankful for. Maybe it's that our body, we're thankful for our body and the hard work it's doing. Walk your hands to your feet or your feet to your hands for forward fold. Hands to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, arms up, rise up. And exhale, lower. Beautiful. Keeping the weight in our right foot, lift up the left knee and step back. Foot flat on the mat, foot at a 40, uh, toes at a 45 degree angle, pointing to the front right, the left corner. Arms up for warrior one. Spine is long, shoulders away from the ears, engaging both legs. We want our front foot at a 90, uh, knee at a 90 degree angle. Knee over the ankle. Inhale, exhale, open up the chest to the left. Arms are long, gaze is over the right hand. For warrior two. Inhale, cartwheel the arms to frame the front foot flat on the mat, step back into plank. Drop down onto your knees if you need to. And press back into downward facing dog. Beautiful. We're going to take a little bit of a break here. Lower down onto your knees if you're not already there. Knees greater than hip distance apart, toes together, sink back into child's pose. Keep your breathing. Inhale, tuck the toes, exhale, press into the mat, lift the hips for downward facing dog. Walk the feet to the hands, or the hands to the feet for forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, rise up, arms up. And exhale, lower. We're going to take a little bit of a balance. It's possible you might need a wall or a chair to help you. It's possible that you don't. However, this works for your body is beautiful. Putting our weight into our left leg, we're going to lift our right leg and put the bottom of our right foot on the inside of our left ankle for tree pose. Our knee is open, our hip is open. When you, uh, you can find a drishti, a focal point, a point that's not moving on the wall. If you focus there, sometimes that can help us with our balance. Also, it helps to engage your core and spine long. If you're feeling comfortable with your tree, you can extend your branches to make the pose yours. If you're feeling stable, you can move your foot up to your calf or to your thigh, avoiding the area directly on your knee. Your tree might wobble a little and that's fine. And if your tree falls, just replant it. Beautiful. And lower. And now to the other side. Placing the weight on the right foot, lift the left leg up, open the knee, bottom of the left foot on the inside of the right ankle. Make the pose yours by extending your branches. Maybe your tree has different branches than mine. If you're feeling comfortable, you can put your foot on your calf or on your thigh. Find your drishti for balance. And lower, beautiful. 
Beautiful. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, press into the mat, step back into plank. Knees to the mat, toes together, sink back into child's pose. Beautiful. This is beautiful. We're going to carefully come to a seated position on the mat, legs out in front. We're going to bend the right knee and cross the right knee over the left leg, foot flat on the mat on the other side. Inhale, arms up, right hand behind you on the mat, left hand bent on the outside of the right leg. If this is not possible for you, you can grab the outside of the leg with your hand. If you have your elbow on the knee and you're able to, you can gaze over your right shoulder. As you inhale, picture your spine lengthening. And as you exhale, maybe you can move a little bit deeper into the twist and maybe you can't and that's fine. Beautiful. Release the hands, straighten the leg. Left leg bent, cross over the right, inhale, arms up. Exhale, left hand goes behind you on the mat, right arm bends on the outside of the left thigh, of knee. Gazing over the left shoulder if possible. Inhale to lengthen the spine. And exhale to move a little bit deeper into the twist. Release the arms, uncross the leg. Beautiful. We are going to bring the soles of our feet together and let our knees fall to the side gently. We're not forcing anything today. If you like, hold your ankles and if you choose to, use your elbows to push your knees toward the mat. Nothing drastic, just a gentle nudge toward the mat. We're keeping our spine long. Beautiful. Releasing the ankles, keeping our feet together. We're gonna put our hands on the mat in front of our feet. We're going to start to walk our hands away from our toes. Maybe you walk them one inch away from your toes. Maybe you're still holding your toes. If you choose to walk away from your hands, we wanna keep our spine long. And gently stretch. You should not feel pain. We're breathing. We're still breathing. Bringing your feet close to you is going to have a different stretch than having your feet farther away. Maybe you had your feet a little bit farther away and you notice this on the outside of your hips. Maybe they're a little bit closer to your body and you notice it on the inside of your hips. Start to walk the hands back to the feet and rise up. We're going to come to a lying position on our back. And if it's not comfortable for you to lie on your back, it's fine. You can just stay seated. Lie on your back, knees bent. Bring the knees toward the chest to give them a hug. If it's not possible for you to hug your knees and you'd like to use a strap, it's fine. 
and hold them with a strap. Again, nothing you do today should hurt. Returning the feet to the mat, cross the right ankle over the left knee, opening up the knee to the side. This is a beautiful stretch here. This is a stretch for our hip. If you want a more intense stretch, you can start to lift your left foot off the floor, bringing your thigh towards your chest. Another option without hurting yourself is to hug the back of the left knee, pulling the thigh toward the chest. Our spine is long, we're breathing, our shoulders are away from our ears. Keep your right foot flexed to protect your knee. Release the thigh, return the foot to the mat, and then cross the leg, leaving the right foot uh, knee bent. Cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Either stay here or you can lift the right leg, moving the thigh toward the chest, keeping the left foot flexed to protect the knee. If you choose to, grab behind the right thigh for a gentle stretch. We're not doing anything drastic. Beautiful. Release the thigh, lower the foot to the mat, uncross the leg. Keeping our knees bent, arms out at a T. We're going to let the knees drop to the right side. The knees don't have to reach the right side. We want to keep our both shoulders on the mat. We're breathing. If it's uncomfortable, the position that you're legs are in when they've dropped to the right you could put a cloth under them and return to center beautiful and let the knees fall to the left keeping both shoulders on the mat comfortable you can gaze over your right arm and return to center we're going to do one last pose before we move to savasana we're going to stretch out long on our back arms overhead toes legs long, arms overhead. We're gonna start to move our arms and our legs toward the right, keeping our torso center. So we're shifting our arms over, shifting our legs over. We're starting to make ourselves into a C. If you want a more intense stretch, you can cross your left leg over your right, left arm over your right. breathing. Uncross if you're crossed and shift everything back to center. Legs long, arms long. Let's move our arms and legs toward the left, keeping our torso center. Want a more intense stretch, cross the right arm over the left, right leg over the left. And 
and cross and move back to center. You can stay on your back. We're going to start to move into Savasana, which is the rest portion of our class. Um, I ask that if you need to leave the class before Savasana is over, which will be about five minutes, that you do so now. That allows everyone a safe space to relax without worrying about who's walking around or being stepped on. Savasana is um, a rest portion. It allows your body to relax after you've worked. It honors your body for the work it's done. Uh, it's typically done on your back. Legs relaxed and palms facing up. If it's not comfortable for you to lie on your back, you can lie on your side with a bolster. Um, or if you choose to do Savasana seated, that's also beautiful. This is your Savasana. Um, and it can be done however is most comfortable for you. Typically, people close their eyes during Savasana. You don't have to if you don't want to. There are no hard and fast rules. Um, so if you choose to do it lying down, let's come, let's find your position. You can take up as much space as you need to on the mat. Let your legs fall to the side, palms are up. Relax your face, unclench your jaw, relax your shoulders, relax your arms, relax your hands. Relax your hips. Relax your legs. Relax your feet. Start to smile. To thank your body for the work it's done. allow your mind and body a brief rest before we go about our busy work. watching this on video, feel free to remain in Savasana for as long as you need to. Thank you for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste.